The third question is called the focus question, which is, what's the real challenge here for you? What's the real challenge here for you? Now, when you say, what's the real challenge? <coughs> they go into all sorts of things. You know, president is like this, government taxes, blah, 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 potato prices, all this. Now, you narrow it down. No, what's the real challenge for you? It becomes very focused. All right. So, keep the question personal. As soon as I bring you in there, it's personal. Now, it's about me. What's the real challenge for you. Are you are you with me? Sometimes they'll say, you know, Sanjeev, yeah, so the bus got late, my child is sick, the project is late, the project manager is a real horrible fellow, right? He thinks he's it, he thinks he's like close to God. I am also I'm in stress, Sanjeev. I have, you know, gastritis now. Even now my stomach is hurting. My toes, I knocked a door and my toe is swollen. Sanjeev, so many problems, so many challenges. So, other people, once they start talking, they have problems, problems like problem diarrhea. <laughs> problem diarrhea, problem, problem, problem. Yeah? <laughs> so, let them say the problems and then again, what's the real challenge here for you? There is another problem sometimes we face, which is called coaching the ghost. <laughs> so, as, so, what's the real, real challenge? Oh, no, no, Sanjay, the real challenge is Dilruk, no? Right? I can't work with the guy, you know, he's like this in the project, he does this, it is this. And now we are on a long chat about Dilruk. How Dilruk should change, what Dilruk should do better, all of that. That is coaching the ghost, because Dilruk is not in the room. If I have to address Dilruk's problems, I have to call Dilruk and now Dilruk, let's have this chat. Are you all, are you all with me? Have you all got caught in this trap sometimes? We go on a long tangent like discussing and bashing someone else who's not there. Who is there is Pubudu. Now Pubudu is grumbling about Akila. Now Pubudu, what's the real challenge for you? <laughs> Bring him back. Bring him back. Do you understand? So ghost can be the person, the project, the situation, the government, the weather, the price of potatoes, all sorts of things. You forget about all that. Now, what's the challenge for you? <laughs> All right, it helps to zero in, to focus, to focus, to focus. Are you with me? Then there are other people, and you, they come into your office and you have a, a chat with them, and they say, ah, did you see that? You know, I went for this seminar by Sanjeev and he was talking of this new theory, some Marcus Buckingham's new theory. You know, it was in a research paper and that was really nice. And then Digger Khatawa came about the whole training and the research and the this. And now you're waiting to see when will they get to the point. <laughs> have you come across people like that? Yes, show of hands, we have people like that to come and talk, 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 knock. They know where, where they're going. So people who love to talk as if they are an observer. You know, we are not doing so well no, as an organization. We have to solve a lot of problems. No, You know, we, we uh, the customer doesn't like our products anymore. No, no they are talking to everybody other than themselves. <laughs> so, okay, right, that's very good. So what's the real challenge for you? <laughs> Bring them back. And there are two types of coaching uh, conversations you can have. Coaching for performance and coaching for development. Coaching for performance is trying to fix a problem right now. Coaching for development is trying to help that person develop so that problem doesn't occur again. You hear, hear the difference? Coaching for performance versus coaching for development. And of course, you bring the what else question also. So what's the real challenge here for you, right? Good, 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 good. And what else? All right, good, 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 good. And what else? Now, out of all of those three that you told me, what's the biggest challenge for you? With which one do you think we should focus on first? No, I have to do all three, boss. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> but as we can't do all three at the same time, which of those should we look at? Focus, 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 question. All right. Are we okay? So what's the real challenge here for you? What's the real challenge here for you? All right. The next quoting conversation question is all about start with what. 
This is a very, very, very powerful way of having a conversation. I have tried this so many times, it really works. So you start all your sentences with what? As against why? So if I say, Jayanath, why did you do this? How would you take that? How would you take? If I say, why did you do this? How would you react? Will you become defensive? Isn't that a little bit of an attack? Why do you do that? Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of aggression, little bit of an attack. If I say, what made you do this? What made you do this? I'm curious to know, what made you act like this? <laughs> Why did you scream at that customer, Yusuf? Yusuf, I'm curious to know, what made you raise your voice to this customer? Because I observed it. Now, as soon as you say, what? Emotions are not so high, and the person goes inside to try to find an answer to the what question. So we go inside. Okay? So when we say why, we put people on the defensive and gets us solving the problem, not the person we are coaching. Right? So, why did you do that? No, so I came late to work and that's all that you could do and all that. It will solve the problem there, but it's not going to, you know, solve it permanently. So, few examples. Instead of why did you do that, what were you hoping for here? Instead of why did you think this was a good idea, what made you choose this course of action? Instead of why are you bothering with this, what's important for you here? Now you may think this is really difficult, how are you going to do this? Anything starts with the first step. Anything starts with just self-awareness, giving yourself space, not be in a hurry to jump in and start talking, but think, formulate your answer, formulate your question, then ask. Now I just gave you a 10 second silence. <laughs> Did any of you wonder why Sanjeev is not speaking? <laughs> Did you understand? I'm giving you a lot of silence now. Is anyone feeling that? What's going on? Why is he not talking? No. You're fine with that. You're processing. So don't be too eager to jump in and start talking. Wait, all right? And using silence as a tool. Using silence as a tool. Using silence as a tool. Okay, and the last coaching question we are going to discuss is called the learning question, which is very, very important. How do we create a learning instance or a learning situation or a learning experience from this conversation because it's that learning experience is what is going to make that person change the behavior in the future okay so the learning question so so far we discussed what's on your mind and what else what's the real challenge here for you using what in the questions Silence as a tool, seven, six, five, <laughs> five. And now the learning question, which is six, right? What's the learning question? What was most useful for you? Now, before you wind up the conversation and the person walks out of your room, what was most useful for you? What was most useful for you? What was most useful for you. So, we don't learn by telling. <laughs> if someone tells us something, yeah, you should do this, you should do this, you should, we actually don't learn much. We hear it, but we don't learn. We learn a little bit more by doing, <laughs> but we learn the most by recalling and reflecting. What happened here? Why did I do that? Why did I say that? What should I have done? What did I learn here? What was helpful for me? How can I use this? How can I benefit? How can I help someone else? What could I have done differently? So this guy who is an academic called Chris Ar Argyris, 
came up with this method called double loop learning, where the first loop is to fix the problem, and the second loop is to create a, create, uh, create a learning moment. So you revisit the whole thing again, and create learning from that. So that there's less chance of this happening in the future. So if you spend a lot of time mentoring someone or coaching someone in your room, but you don't create this learning moment, they will go out and most probably do it again. <laughs> because they, they haven't been given time to think through. So double loop learning. So, this is very interesting. If we want to move something to long term memory, there are four main drivers that we need to access. Four main neuro drivers of long term memory. The first is attention. If you are not giving anyone attention or the person talking to you or the book you are reading or whatever, there is no chance of learning happening. Would you agree? That's why I've been really harping on phone, phone, phone. Because if you are not listening to me and giving me my, your attention, there is no chance that I can get through. So attention is the first one. Second one is generation, which is creating own connections to new and presented ideas. Generate knowledge and answers, which is what comes from this question. What was most useful to you creates generation. So we discussed this problem. We discussed a lot of things. Now, what have you figured out from all this? <laughs> what was useful for you? Which is the guys thinking now and creating those connections. Ah, this is, okay, this is what I think I should do. This was what was useful for me. This is how I'm going to use it. Learning moment. Are you, are you understanding? Are you understanding? Learning moment, learning moment, learning moment. The third thing, if you want long-term memories, you have to bring emotion into the mix. Like, that's like the magic ingredient, E. Emotion. Right? Why do I care? Essentially, emotion means that. Why do I care? Because if you don't care, your brain says, if this guy doesn't care, why should I help him to remember it? <laughs> There's no point. Does that make sense to you? If you don't care, why should you remember? Correct? If we don't care, look, if you don't care, why, why should we remember? Right? Why should the brain do anything to help us remember? We don't care. The brain says, you don't care, I also don't care. Let's forget it. <laughs> and fair enough. So, emotion. And spacing is space repetition. So if you want long-term learning, there has to be space repetition. Have you ever been in a situation, you went for a class on a Monday, you learned everything in that class, Lecture asked you, did you understand? Yes, I understood. Ask questions, you answered all the questions. You close your book, don't open it again till next Monday. <laughs> now come back to the same classroom and lecture asked, what did we do last Monday? Not a soul remembers. Have you all been there? Experienced it? That's because short term memory has degenerated. Because there's something called the forgetting curve. So even you have a coaching conversation, this guy is going to forget what we discussed in a little while. The forgetting curve, Ebbinghaus's forgetting curve, we forget really, really fast. Within 24 hours, within 24 hours, we have forgotten 80% of what we learned. Sharp decline. That is why I'm asking you to take notes and have your mind map. If you refresh your mind, you look at this mind map tomorrow, you're going to slow this forgetting curve. So what happens? Now by tomorrow it has dropped to somewhere here. Now if you look at your mind map, it's up again there. Are you understanding? If you actually think about what we learned, how you can apply, how you can use it, that's emotion. That's showing you care, which is then going to strengthen those neural connections. It's all about neural connections. Do you know that? The more you do something over and over again, the connections between your neurons get stronger. That's memory. See, we all type, we all use a keyboard. Didn't all of us learn, did any of you go for typing classes? Some of us did. But everybody else didn't, right? How did we all learn? Didn't we all learn using the COCO method? You all use the COCO method? A co, B co. Zico and... <laughs> you thought it's some Japanese fancy method. Koko. Koko monkey. Koko tabai kare yo kola. Eko, biko. But now you don't. Now you just 
Aren't you just looking at the screen and typing now? What has happened? Neural connections have got stronger. So it's like a super high. The first time you do it, ara caddy rakwa ge. Second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time. That is how your brain works. That's how my brain works. We can't change it. So, if we reflect, even when he comes, we meet him the next time and we ask, right? So, Jivant, what did we discuss last time? <laughs> we get him to reflect. Before leaving your room, you ask, so what was helpful for you here? What helped you here? What was most useful for you? Get him to reflect, which strengthens learning. Is this making sense? Gentlemen, ladies, can I have a show of hands? Is it making sense to you? Making sense, all right. Also, for us, personal benefit for us as leaders, <laughs> when we ask the question, what was most useful to you? It assumes that the conversation was useful, was helpful. So it goes into this guy's mind that whenever I meet my boss, my boss is helping me. Are you understanding? Because if you ask, if I ask somebody, was this useful? You could say no. <laughs> yes. What was most useful? Now the mind goes to think, what was most useful? <laughs> He's not thinking, was it useful or not? It's taken as a given. It was helpful. It was useful. So what was most useful? Identify the one big thing. What was most useful? Not everything. So because you try to say, what are, tell me the 10 things you learned. Fellow won't do anything. <laughs> At least one big thing that you got out of this, go and do that. That will be great. No? <laughs> are you all understanding? So let's say somebody who has an anger management problem, right? Also has a teamwork problem. Also has a relationship problem. Also has a stress problem. Yes, correct? So many problems, right? But if we help the person to solve the anger management problem, don't other problems also get solved? <laughs> now his relationships get better because he doesn't lose his temper. Now his stress levels are better because he's not losing it. You understand? So it's again an 80-20 rule, Pareto principle. Find what is causing the most impact. 20% of our issues cause 80% of the impact. 80-20 rule. And out of that 20%, one, 10% or 1% of the issues might have a 75% impact. So you just fix that one thing, you're 75% better. And again, that has been my experience. So one big thing, personal for you, makes it for you. When I say for you, it's personal, gives us feedback. Learning but not judgment and reminds people how useful you are to them, which is good. Which is the next time you call someone up for a conversation, they're happy to talk to you. 